darkness may overtake me and my song forsake me but alone i never shall be for the friend beside me promised he would guide me and will keep his promise to me he will keep
want to thank you this morning for bringing us into your presence. It's for our blessing. I want to thank you for how you have been speaking to our hearts even from the very beginning of the service today. And Lord God, as we have come into your presence, we're trusting that you will even show us more things to reckon with in our lives. We're praying that the entrance of your word will produce faith, produce greatness in us. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to be back to the presence of God. I'll be sharing with us uh, on the title, Set Up for Greatness. Set Up for Greatness. Everybody say, Set Up for Greatness. I don't hear you very well. God is setting somebody up here for greatness. Amen. You may take that as a prophetic word, but I can tell you that before the end of this year, somebody's going to be set up for greatness. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, still from the subject of this morning. God's covenant with David. When God makes covenant with an individual, it is for greatness. It's to bless that person, to bless his family. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. The Bible says here, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy boils, and I will establish his kingdom. First thing, he shall build me an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit in the witty, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee, and thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. The part of the trouble we're having today is that people don't have visions anymore. People don't hear from God anymore. They don't even understand when God is speaking and when he's not speaking. But I pray that God will open heaven to you. He will give you a word. He will show you his will. He will show you his greatness. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hither to? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 22. And I want us to read together as if you are alive. Because you are alive, of course. Praise the Lord. Are you there? No, you can be awake, but you are not alive in the spirit. You can be in the church, but you are in California. But the church is located in Washington, D.C., buying and selling in California. I pray God will wake you up in the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We read from verse 20. Let's read together after the count of two. One, two. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Verse 22, everybody. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You know, I will touch on some of this as we go on before we end the service today. Some people don't understand the relevance of fellowship, why it's important to remain in fellowship. In fellowship, you will also achieve greatness. Praise the Lord. He said, follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them who are the them here the people of god 
people that carry the glory of God. And may I tell you this morning, we're talking about Deeper Life Bible Church. It's a place to be. I don't know what's going on out there. If God has positioned me here, planted me here, it's for me to be great. Now, some people have something. They don't value what they have. They think about what others have. They're not concerned about praising God. Praise the Lord. Coming back to our text, 2 Samuel 7, 12. I go through the three points this morning. The first point is concern for the great covenant giver. Concern. David was concerned. He had concern for God. He had concern for the covenant that he had with God. He had concern for his family. Praise the Lord. David had concern for God primarily. So that's why we focus there on concern for the great covenant giver. We will also look at converted for greatness. When God saves a man, he does not leave that man in obscurity. We need to understand that when God designed you and me, when God created man in the Garden of Eden, it was for greatness. Adam lost it, and God does not, is not compatible with sin. He is not compatible with mediocrity. God is not compatible with darkness. That's why the Bible tells us that there's no agreement between light and darkness. If you belong to God, you have no business with darkness. And if God is saving a man out of sin, it is to put the person in light. In light, there's glory. In light, you will glow. In light, you will shine. In light, you will not remain in obscurity. And I challenge you this morning, if you've come out of darkness into light, it's time to fulfill your destiny. I don't hear a glorious amen in the house. I will not walk in darkness. I will walk in the light of God. Conversion for greatness. And lastly, before we pray, we will look at consecration or consecrated for greatness. Let's go back to point number one, concern. For the great covenant giver. God's covenant with David led to the new covenant that was revealed to David. Uh, of course, uh, led to the new covenant that will be climaxed later on through Jesus. God's interaction with David led to the emphasis, a revelation of what God will do through his son. We see here that King David was concerned Let's look at that same second Samuel chapter 7, verse 1. It came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in the house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. It's not everything that is in the heart of man to do that he is able to do. It's not everywhere that man wants to be that he is able to get to. And that's why the Bible teaches us to say, if God wills, because God God gives the power to, to do. And that's why the Bible also makes us to know in the day of God's power, his people shall be willing. If God's power is not manifest to you, given to you to achieve a certain task, you cannot do that task. But the point I'm drawing your attention to here is David had concern for God, his glory. He said, I want to make a befitting place of worship for God. I don't want the ark of God just anywhere behind curtains or behind a curtain. I live in a house of cedar. I can give God better than I, I am giving to God. God deserves much more than I have myself. David was selfless. He was thinking about the glory of God. How can I make? You know, some people come into a fellowship, they're only interested about themselves, me, my, my family. But what have you invested to make where you are a better place? Some come into this world, they live it better than they met it. And that's why I'm actually recoiling from the administration of our pastor last Sunday. 
made for more. Made for more. Designed for more. There's much more that can come out of your life, this elementary life of yours. That's why I'm also talking to us this morning about set up for greatness. Why do you walk around aimlessly? Why do you live like your life as if God hasn't spoken good concerning you? Why are your company company of doubters and company of evildoers who have no business with your destiny? Why are your friends, your primary friends, people who walk against the glory of God in your life? When God has spoken good concerning you, why are you walking against God? I want to challenge you this morning, as you walk out from this place, you begin to walk with God in your life. David was concerned. He, said, he sat in his house and said, Lord, God, you've given me rest about me from all my enemies. And then he expressed his heart desire. He expressed the burden that was in him. What, kind, what are the burdens? What are the things? What are the things you carry within you? Because as a man speaks, so is the content of his heart. What is your passion? Do you have passion for God? Do you have passion to live for God? Passion to, to walk for God. Passion to bless people through the power of God in you. Passion to make an impact in your world, a dying world. Don't say I'm a youth. Don't say I'm a child. Don't say Josiah was a child. Don't say I'm a man. Don't say I'm a woman. God has used people in the time past. And God can use me in this generation. The king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, look, see. See how... You know, I dwell in the house of Cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said unto the king, Go, do all that is in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. What were the reasons for his concern? The reasons are not far-fetched for David's concern for God. He felt God deserves a better treatment. He felt God had taken him from obscurity, from being a shepherd boy, chasing sheep. I wonder if he was really a shepherd over the sheep, because he was a little boy. I wonder if he was really shepherding the sheep or the sheep were shepherding him because he was chasing sheep. But he grew to become a shepherd. It was in that condition that God found him. God took him from being a shepherd boy to become a king over Israel. Praise the Lord. God is going to turn somebody's destiny around for good. Perhaps he was thinking about the journey of his life. Look at where I'm coming from. From a list of families in Israel. I wasn't even the firstborn in my family. But I'm the last. My brothers would despise me. I couldn't even measure up with them. As I speak about this, does this remind you about Joseph? Does this remind you about people that God used? God is not looking for supermen. God is not looking for intelligent people with IQ alone. People, I, I'm, I'm too smart to be in the church. I'm too educated. Church is for, for illiterates. Is that right? They don't even know what they're talking about. Can somebody praise the Lord? Perhaps David was thinking about the opportunities that God had given to him. The wars, the battles that he had been through, that God saw him through. And he said, God deserves a better place than what he has. God has taken me from obscurity and made me a king. God deserves a, great, a better place. Look at what he said in Psalm 71 verse 21. He said, you shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. God, you have given me comfort. You deserve something better from me. Do you know God deserves something better out of your time? God deserves something better out of your potential. God deserves something better from you. Give him the best that you have. You know, but I ponder on this. Why did God refuse to allow David to build David had good intent. He had his proposal written down. God, he, had, he had a plan for God, but God said, don't, don't do it. I don't want you to do it. We didn't, this morning's scripture, we didn't really focus on why God didn't give 
David a pass, did not approve his proposal to build. But first, Chronicles, turn with me to 1 Chronicles 22, verse 1. It gives us, you know, an illumination into the reason why he could not build. First Chronicle, chapter 22. Are you there? From verse 1. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of bond offering for Israel. And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel. And he set masons to, to hew wrought stones to build the house of God. David was literally preparing to build. So I wonder the gap, time gap, between when he said, I will do it, and when Nathan returned to him and God said, don't do it. But David was preparing, and David prepared iron in abundance for the nails, for the doors of the gates, and for the joinings and brass in abundance without weight. Also cedar trees in abundance for the Zidonians, and they of Tyre brought much cedar wood to David. David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be builded for the Lord must be exceeding mag magnificent. Praise the Lord. David had a good plan of fame, of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. You know, some, David here is looking for an opportunity to do something for God. Why is it in your own case? Every opportunity that you have, you are avoiding doing something for God. Every opportunity you have to give to God is like, if it's not announced, no, 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 no. If it's not announced and emphasized on, I don't think I have to do it. It does not have to be emphasized on. It is for your own good to plug yourself in to what God is blessing. And somebody here is going to rethink today. Somebody here is going to reverse today. Somebody here is going to, you know, is going to readjust today. To begin to do something for God. Not mechanically, but out of love. Praise the Lord. David calls Solomon, verse 6, his son, and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies." Round about, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now my, now my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou. And build the house of the Lord thy God as he had said of thee. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding, and give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. Then shalt thou prosper if thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgment which the Lord charged Moses, which concerning, uh, charged Moses concerning uh, with Israel. Be strong and of a good courage, dread not. Not be dismayed. Now behold, in my trouble, I have prepared for the house of the Lord an hundred thousand talents of gold, a thousand talents of silver, of brass, and iron without weight, for its abundance, timber also the stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add there to you. Moreover, there are workmen with thee in abundance, hewers, and workers of stone, and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every man of work. Of, the, of gold, of gold, the silver, and of brass, and iron, there is no number. Arise, therefore, arise, therefore, arise, therefore, and be doing. Set up for greatness is what I'm talking about here. Yeah. Set up for greatness, that's what I'm talking about here. Solomon was set up for greatness. 
by virtue of the covenant that God had with David. God will set you up for greatness. God will set your children up for greatness. In the name of Jesus. Now, there's some people, because God said they're not going to build, then they become nonchalant, like Hezekiah. They begin to live a carefree life. They don't understand that what they do today has future implications. They don't understand that they represent a generation. If Jesus tarries, that what they do, the seeds they sow today, will germinate in the future. If you sow nothing today, there will be nothing to reap in the future. If you don't sow greatness today, you may call it a seed. It looks like a seed, but that seed is capable of producing great trees. Trees of shelter. You know, as we go forward, when you look at the content of the covenant that God had with David, it was loaded, praise the Lord. A loaded covenant. It was. So we see the reason why God said to David, well, I don't want you to build, that's reserved for your son. But eventually we see Solomon built the temple, it was a glorious temple. The Queen of Sheba even came from Africa to come and grace the occasion, to see. And God's glory came down as he had said. We also see uh, the eternal implication of this covenant with David. We see here that more perfectly was it as far as the fulfillment of the coming of Christ. Jesus came through the lineage of David. He came to redeem man from sin. Solomon built a physical temple, but Christ came and built a spiritual temple in you. You are the temple of the living God. Praise the Lord. You are the dwelling place of God. You carry God's spirit and you must make impact. God does not put his spirit on anyone for no reason. He puts his spirit to make impact, to change lives. No wonder Jesus, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to make impact. And by the grace of God, you will make impact in your community. By the grace of God, you will make impact in your family. By the grace of God, you will make impact at your place of work. By the grace of God, you will make impact in this church. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. The Bible says here, from verse 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord, what covenant, what agreement hath Christ with Belial? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are I am the temple of the living God. How about you? I am the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Be separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters said the Lord Almighty. Sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Amen. When you demonstrate genuine concern for God, his honor, his kingdom, his work, his people, God will have a word for you, like he did for the case of, uh, in the case of uh, David. You know, it was out of that concern, you know, God, there was a revelation. You know, don't expect a revelation when your heart is not in the walk. Your heart is not in God, what God is doing. Don't expect God to, to speak to you. Don't expect God to reveal to you. Don't expect God to, to share his burden with you. God shares his burden with people who are concerned. You know, they said to the servant, who will go for us? But the servant of God had it and said what? Here am I, What? You will never hear the, he's already spoken, but he's written what given to you. You don't even obey. 
How will you hear the rhema? How will you hear the word in season that is based on the platform of his word that is established? Sometimes I'm confused. I don't even know what decisions to take in my career. But elementary instructions in the Bible you have not even complied with. You're planning to get married. You say, well, some people have now resorted to even choosing, walking by sight. See, I'm going to choose. I, I, I feel what I feel, I, I choose. I will choose who I have feelings towards. It's much more than your feelings. It's about your destiny. It's about the will of God. It is about the mind of God. It's about his desire for you. So I have spoken good things. I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of what? Peace. And not of what? Evil. To give you an expected end. An expected end. An expected end. A covenant is a legal, but let's add to that, a spiritual, with God now, it's a spiritual agreement. But the uniqueness of this agreement is it's with a higher power. It's with a God that has the ability to do all things. It's with a God who can create. Remember when God made man, Remember, he had just created things and put things in place. He said, let there be. We're talking about a God that can create, that can do and undo. He created man in his own image. There was an agreement at the Garden of Eden. And God said to man, be fruitful and multiply. It was when sin came in that man fell of grace. It was when sin fell in that man was driven to the, out of the garden to wander. Man fell off that agreement. Man fell off that covenant. And then sin, causes, damnation came. But thanks be to God, Jesus came to recover us. Jesus came to redeem man from causes. He came to redeem man, to make man who man ought to be in the image of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When you look at the content of this covenant, you know, you'll see here that it was a covenant of mercy. It was a covenant of royalty. It was a covenant of, not just mercy, unceasing mercy to be in the house of David. Sure mercies of David we talk about today. And Solomon enjoyed it. When Solomon came, he enjoyed the mercies of God. He enjoyed rest. He enjoyed the goodness of God. Don't you want your family to enjoy the goodness of God? Don't you want your, your, your generation to enjoy the goodness of God? Get into a covenant with God today. We see here that God's covenant with David stands in continuity with the covenant that God had with Adam in the Garden of Eden. Be fruitful and multiply. Some people are born into the world and they fall out. They don't take advantage of this covenant. They live ordinary lives. They don't take the advantage of redemption, what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, redeeming man from the causes. They live through life undermining their potential. They live through life operating under causes. You're redeemed from causes. For the past two Sundays, the pastor has been praying for the church that God will bring you, if there's any cause operating in your life, if there's any cause operating in your life, God will bring you out of those causes and plunge you into blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. May I share with you this morning, you have no covenant with sickness. You have no covenant with death. You have no covenant with failure. You might be experiencing difficulties and setbacks momentarily, okay? You might be taking a course and it's like, how do I pass this course? It's like my little head cannot get this done. I, God will introduce you into a new covenant today. God will bring you out of obscurity and set you in high places in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Set up for greatness. Can I hear you say that? God is setting me up for greatness. You know, after David received the covenant, after David got the revelation, he didn't argue with God. He did not force his way to do, to, he didn't disobey God. 
He did not complain. He did not whine. Look at his conversation with Solomon. I showed you in Chronicles. He was building. He was setting up. He was setting up Solomon for greatness. He did not try to undermine well, selfishly operate. He did everything possible to make sure that Solomon succeeded. And that's what a God expects us today. No wonder he went to God after Nathan came to him. He, stood, he appreciated God. He praised God. Thank you for the opportunity you've given me so far in my own life. Even though I'm not going to be able to do this for you, but Lord, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for even the privileges I had. Thank you because I would have been a victim in the hand of Saul. Thank you, O oh God, because I would have been lost in damnation. I would have been, I would have died in the valley of the shadow of death. But for the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. I appreciate God so much for being my dwelling place in this generation. I appreciate this God. And Solomon, this is what I'm talking to you about, okay? I want you to continue in this way. God has set you up for greatness. And I am going to put things, all the raw materials, all the men of, of labor, all the work, the tools, and everything that you need to succeed. David, I think, was a greater man than, than Solomon. David, I think, was more, you know, was more honorable than Solomon. Even though God wasn't going to use him to do that, but you know what? He made life better. I think honorable people make life better, than, better for other people who come behind them. I think, I mean, like Pastor was telling us last Sunday, whoever created the bulb, whoever created light, the, the electricity that we have today, from the electrons, the electrons that we don't see, but made something out of it. And recently I was looking at, a, I mean, a, an invention where people are even using banana to, to charge their cell phones. This human mind is something. I mean, people who, people, God in people, I mean, if you're unbelievers who understand how God works, that this mind is not an ordinary mind. How much more you that have the Spirit of God in you, God will use you to make impact in this generation. I will not live a mediocre life. I will not live in obscurity. I've been delivered from darkness. I will not walk in darkness. So when the devil comes tempting you, turn to your neighbor and say, when the devil comes tempting you, he doesn't tempt people without value. He knows you are a jewel in the hand of God. He doesn't disturb people who are in sin. He just leaves them to do what they do. But he comes over and over seeking to destroy you. Look at converted for greatness. Converted for greatness. David was converted. David was saved. Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God. Verse 1. We're going to read together, everybody. Turn to Psalm 51, verse 1. Have what? Mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my what? Iniquity. Cleanse me from my? For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I what? Sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother what? Conceive me. Verse 6, everybody. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. 7, everybody. Purge me. Purge me with his soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Stop there for a moment. Praise the Lord. David was converted. David was saved. What does it mean to be converted? It is to be born again. It is to repent. Acknowledge you can't help yourself. Acknowledge that you were shaped in iniquity. You were born in sin. And if you continue that course, you will not see God at the end. But God had a plan. He came with a plan of redemption through Jesus. 
That's why the Bible tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, you have to have faith, believe in God, should not what? Should not what, everybody? Do you ever think about that? Do you ever think about that? That whoever believes in him should not perish. Why are you reluctant believing God? Do you ever think about that? God doesn't just say things for no reason. He's not the, you see, God doesn't declare things that he, but you know, like Numbers 23, 19 tells us, God is not a man that he should lie. God is neither a son of man that he should repent of what he has said. He has said a thing, shall he not do it? He has spoken, shall he not make it good? So whoever believes in him should not, should not perish. You know what that means? If you refuse to believe this God, if you refuse to walk with God, so can two walk together except they be agreed, then you're on a course. Even if I don't say it, you're on a course to obscurity. You're on a course to smallness. You're a course on causes. Salvation, conversion is for greatness. When God saves you, think about the prodigal son. He had greatness. He did not know. If he knew, you think he would. I mean, if he knew what was ahead, that there was danger ahead, the outcome of his decisions, I want to go live my life. I'm, now I'm 18. I want to get me a house, an apartment. I don't need you, Daddy. I don't need you anymore. I'm now a man. Now I can take care of my bills. It's much more than making money and taking care of your bills. I can choose my friends. I don't, don't tell me what to do. I can choose whoever I want to talk to. You're not God in my life. See, Solomon listened to David, his father, and he was set up for greatness. In your own case, why is your own case different? You will not listen to your parents. You will not listen to leaders. You will not listen to ministers that God has placed over you. And the Bible tells us that people who understand what it means to be children of God, they honor people who fear God. They honor ministers of God. But in your case, you despise ministers that God has set over you. I mean, perhaps I'm preaching, you care less about what I'm saying. Good for you. I pray God will give you a think, a rethink. I pray God will have mercy upon you. I pray God will give you utmost attention. I pray God will reckon with you and change you. Because when he changes you, he's setting you up for greatness. I may not be in your atmosphere the next five years. I may not be around your business in another ten years. But remember what I am saying. You enter a covenant with God here today. You will live to remember this message today. That God is setting you up for greatness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will bring people your way. Godly people your way. Take advantage of that opportunity. Take advantage of Deeper Life Bible Church. Take advantage of the people you see around you. Don't force yourself to go to church. Don't force yourself to come to fellowship. What can you do to make it a better place? Show some love. Don't be demanding for love all the time. Show some love as well. God will set you up for greatness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2, 20 to 22 that I read before said, But in a great house, isn't here a great house? Is God's kingdom not great? David understood that God was great and he had concern. He understood the greatness of God. I would say in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. I will be, I have made up my mind, pastor or no pastor, overseer or no overseer, general superintendent or no general superintendent, parent or no parent. And some of you are blessed to have your parent. I don't even have my father anymore. But some of you have your father and your mother with you, but you will not listen. Say, I pray that God will open your eyes. To greatness in the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't finish the story of the prodigal son. I mean, he went big. You know, the, you know the story very well. You go read it. Ponder on it. He began to feed with pigs. This was the child and son of a king feeding with swines. It got that bad. 
It was that bad. When you don't have God in your life, you can be like Nebuchadnezzar. When you don't have God in your life, you can be like that prodigal son. It was when he thought about it. What am I doing here? You know, when we came into this church, uh, this building, there used to be a sign here. What am I on earth for? It used to be pasted here. And I remember that very well. It still impacts my life to today. What am I on earth for? What am I on earth for? Why am I in this, what am I in this neighborhood for? What am I in this family for? Why am I in Deep Alive Bible Church 2019? Why am I here? God has planted you here for a purpose. That purpose will come to pass. You know, times when I'm teaching, I tell some of my students, because they, I've come to realize sometimes students come into the class, they have some half attitude and all that stuff. I say, hey, remember where you're going to, whether you like me or not. Take advantage. Whether you like my accent or not, take advantage. And some of them are in medical school, some of them are in dental school, some of them are here and there. They can give me a ride today. They are big people. Because they took advantage of that interaction. Care less about the messenger. Care more about the greatness of God. Care more about what God wants to do for you, do for your family, do through you. Care more about the glory of God, the presence of God. Care more about the spirit of God in you. The spirit that conquers the world. The spirit that conquers sin and conquers iniquity. Care more about the spirit of God in you that comforts. Care more about his glory. Thy will be done on earth. Thy will be done in my life. Thy will be done in my family. Thy will be done in this church. And David goes into his closet and says, God, even though I know you're not going to do this through me, but Lord God, I thank you. I bless you. Thy will be done, O God. Thy will be done, O God. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, like the prodigal son again, he came back to his senses, he went back to his father. It was when he came back to his father that honor came back to his life. It was when he came back to his father that promotion came back to his life. It was when he came back to his father that greatness that was associated with his father came back to his life. As long as he remained in Egypt, as long as he remained with the swines, I will think he's a swine. It's only he's dressed in a cloth. I will think he's a swine. If there was no light in that place, if I'm counting the swines, one, two, three, four, five, six, he is included in that number. He is a pig as long as he's feasting with pigs. As long as you continue to crawl with chickens, you are a chicken. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as ego. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Converted for greatness. Our God is a great God. Our God is a covenant keeping God. He said, Flee also useful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on God out of a pure heart. Our God is a great God. When you are converted, you enter a covenant with this God. You're delivered from darkness. Your journey to greatness begins. You know, and when God, I told you, I read to you, Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man. He has promised he will bring it to pass. If you keep the covenant, you follow through the condition, he will keep his own part. He does not forsake his own. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, as we move to the last point, think about this. If God rejected Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, why do you think God will embrace you as a covenant breaker? I leave that with you. Point number three. Consecrated for greatness. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold or silver, but also of wood. What kind of vessel do you want to be? You want to be an honorable vessel or one to dishonor? When there are people who cause confusion in the church, you want to be numbered among those people. 
When they talk of gossipers in the church, you want to be numbered among gossipers in the church or people who build homes and families. What camp do you want to be? Talk of prayerful people in the church. Don't you want to be part of prayerful people who uphold the work of God? The Bible says, flee also youthful lust. But it says, if a man therefore purge himself, today you're going to purge. Purge yourself that you may come out as gold. Purge himself from these. He shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctify. So here, you see, God gives an option. We see here the free moral agent. Man is a free moral agent. God does not force his will on man. He doesn't force things that you have drowned your truth. He first, the word of God says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of what? Gold, of silver, some of wood and earth, some to honor, some to dishonor. Then the condition comes that if a man does what? Therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. But we use the word sanctified. Set apart. Ever says set up, set apart for greatness, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Then he says, flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith. Are you righteous? Do you have faith towards God? Charity, do you have love, the love of God in your heart? Are you a man of peace, a woman of peace with your in-laws, in your family, nuclear extended family? What is your role in your family? For the Bible says, follow peace with all men and what? Holiness, without which no one shall what? See the Lord. At your school, are you one of those that knock heads? You knock people's heads. So that they can fight. They fight and at the end of the day you, you act like you've done nothing. That was a full of peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You know, if we're going to be consecrated for greatness, we must put off. Everybody say put off. Ungodly acts. Like a plague. Colossians 3, 8, 9 says, But now ye also put off all this anger. Wrath, malice, man of God, put off anger, wrath, malice, woman of God, put off anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. God said, Don't even say it. Don't even say it. Foul language, don't even say it. Put it off out of your mouth. It says, also, lie not one to another. We have diplomatic lies. We have white lies. Black lies. Some are obvious. Others are inobvious. Unobvious. They are like, you know, inferred. You know, you say something, but you don't mean what you say. The Bible says, do what? Put off what? Put off lying one to another. It's a scene that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. This scripture is referred to people who are in the kingdom. It's a scene that you've already repented of your sins. Seeing that you've already removed the garment of unrighteousness. You are not a notable sinner. You are not an obvious sinner. We call you brother. We call you sister. We call you a child of God. But the Lord is saying, go beyond that. Anything that makes you not what you say you are, within, take them out. Anything that's capable of generating ungodliness, take them out. And so was the case for Joshua the priest. I mean, I said, Joshua was a priest, okay. So as I speak to you, don't, don't, you don't have to condemn yourself. Just turn to God and let God convert you. Joshua was ministering, the priest was ministering, but the Lord spoke to Joshua. Joshua Zechariah 3, verse 3 to 5. It says here, now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel 
I pray that God will open your eyes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Part of the problem that we have today in the church is that we have people who are blind spiritually. They cannot discern. They are just groping in the dark. When you are a man of God, you carry the spirit of God in you, you can see beyond other people. Joshua the priest was a priest to them. If Joshua was a priest, he was a perfect man to them. But before God, Joshua the priest was a hypocrite. He stood before the angel. The angel, God said to him, put off all his effort. God said to him, look, your cloak with filthy garments. Joshua the priest, your thoughts are not right. Joshua the priest, you're not real. People think you're real, but you are not real. He said, and he answered in verse 4, and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I've caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. When the garment is changed, it's a change for greatness. When God removes the garment of filthiness and puts a garment of royalty, it's a chain for greatness. Can I hear everybody say, a chain for greatness? When the prodigal son returned back to the father, they washed, you remember he was a pig, right? Sorry, I mean, he wasn't a pig, but he was like a pig. His garment had to be changed. I wonder how many people showered him that day, scrub him, perhaps, with scrubs, with sticks, with a, uh, a uh, brush and uh, Attached to sticks because he was stinking and all that stuff. Sin makes stink. But the good thing is that he was scrubbed. And then a new garment was given to him. Perhaps the people he left, when he went down the journey of, of, of demotion, maybe they see him again and say, Oh, oh, hey boy, what's up? I'm sorry. I'm not hey boy anymore. My man. No, I'm not your man anymore. I'm a man of God. I'm a child of God. How about that movie? Okay. Uh -uh. That movie? You Which movie are you talking about? Come, let's talk about the word of God. That was in the past. Maybe one of those in the company of people always talking about women, talking about men. Look at his this and look at his that. Put off all those things. If any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Your DNA spiritual is changed. All things are passed away. That's why when the devil tries to inject things into you, because it's non-compatible, everybody say non-compatible, you revolt in the spirit. Even if you have done error, you quickly kneel and say, God, I'm no longer an old person. I'm a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become what? If you're going to be consecrated for greatness, there's a need for you to be like Joshua the high priest. Put off the old garment. Practice abstinence. Learn to say no. Learn to reject. You know, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 says, Abstain from, from what? All appearance of what? We know there's social media everywhere. Those things will come at you. There's a difference between you running at them and them coming at you, okay? Get that clear. As long as you are in the social media platform, they will come after you. But it's also you have a duty and responsibility to do also do what? To abstain. Abstain means delete. What does abstain mean? Tell me, what does abstain mean? Apart from delete, what does it mean? Stay away from. What, what else does it mean? Cut off. What, does, what else does it mean? Flee. What else does it mean? Abstain means what? Go away. What does it mean? No business. Yes. Youth, I'm not hearing our youth. What does it mean to abstain? Don't touch. Flee. If you're a girl, you're one of those, you've become so cheap that boys are always touching you. They're always touching you. 
I love you with the love of... There's no love there. They are trying to take advantage of you. Your body is a tabernacle of God. It's a holy tabernacle. They cannot be feeling you. They cannot. You are untouchable. There's a difference between greeting and greeting. There's a difference between touching and fondling. They are two different things. Carry yourself with dignity. Don't be cheap. There's a big tag on you. The tag of greatness. Don't be cheap. Don't be used. You are not useless. You are useful. You are useful. You're a boy, handsome boy. Good boy, you look good. Come on. Come on, be a spiritual boy. If they are complimenting you, does not mean you are weak, a weakling. Be strong in the Lord. Learn to say no. Learn to reject. Learn to have boundaries. When they cross the boundary, stay away. Can I have some space? Uh, actually, I know you, it's like you didn't wash your teeth today. <laughs> When someone has gotten so close to you to the extent of you can feel the person, you can perceive the person's breath. It is just, to, I remember one of the dangerous temptations I had. A sister wanted to find out what I ate. It was supposed to be a fellowship. Why didn't you wait for us before you ate? What did you eat? And came so close, trying to find out what I ate. Ha, ah. I'm sorry, I forgot how to box. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We all say what? Abstain. That was dangerous. At the end, I'm like, that was dangerous. I can't perceive. Why are they perceiving? If you're not careful, you're going to fall. The Bible says, yield not to temptation. For yielding is seen. Each victory will help you. Some other to win. Some other. It's greatness. God is setting somebody up here for greatness in the mighty name of Jesus. Promote fellowship. Obadiah 1.17 says, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. That's why you must be in fellowship. Because in fellowship there shall be deliverance. There will be holiness. You possess it. He said, And the house of Jacob shall possess. You will possess holiness. You possess righteousness. You possess purity. You possess victory. You possess the glory of the Lord. I will possess the glory of the Lord. Do you know in fellowship you go from strength to strength? Psalm 84 verse 7 says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion as they appear before God. You go from strength to strength. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 3.13 But exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any one of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Fellowship is like an antidote to sin. Fellowship is like an antidote to falling out of grace. When you come to fellowship, when you continue in fellowship, it helps you to continue with the people of God. That's why I say, follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on God out of our pure heart. Promote God. Promote his glory. Delight yourself in the Lord. Psalm 37, 4 to 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. God will give somebody here the desires of his or her heart. God will set somebody up here for greatness. And I hope this morning I'm not just preaching to the choir. I am hoping that somebody here is connecting with grace. I'm hoping that somebody here is connecting with greatness. I'm hoping that somebody here is connecting with the covenant giving God. 
When you 10 years will come from now, you will look back and say, oh, like David, God has taken me out of obscurity. Now he has set me on the throne. God will set somebody here up for greatness in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you believe it. You may you believe it. You're still sitting down your feet and declare God has set me up for greatness. God is setting me up for greatness. God is setting me up for greatness. Rise on your feet. Take that to the Lord in prayer. Take that to the Lord in prayer. Take that to the Lord in prayer. Begin to appreciate God for how far he has brought you. Begin to appreciate God for what he has done for you. Begin to appreciate God for his glory and his goodness in your life. Open your mouth and appreciate God here today. They, Joseph said, I cannot do that wickedness. They, Joseph said, I cannot do that wickedness. I, I may look like a slave in your house, but look, I carry with me the glory of the Lord. I carry with me the power of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord. I am not meant for, for I'm not meant for sin. Reject every, reject every projection of the kingdom of darkness. Reject every projection of the kingdom of darkness. Reject the filthy garments. Say, I'm tired of this filthy garment. I'm tired of filth in my life. Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? God has set you up for greatness. God has set you up for greatness if you will do your part. If you will do your part. If you will do your part. Say, God, anything in my life that makes me, oh God, unfit for greatness. Open your mouth and pray that prayer this morning. Anything in my life that makes me unfit for greatness. Anything in my life that makes me a candidate for destruction. Father, please take them out of my life entirely. Take them out of my life entirely. They put off all this. Put off anger. Put off wrath. Put off blasphemy. Put off filthy communication out of your mouth. Oh Lord God, anything in my life that hinders your greatness from walking through me, take them out of my life. God has called you out of obscurity to give you greatness. God has called you out of the world to set you up for greatness. Our pastor told us you are made for more, not for less. Anything that undermines my potential, anything that undermines the privileges that God has given to me, I renounce them from my life. I renounce them from my life. I renounce them from my life. Some people are so self-centered, they don't understand that the decisions of today will make a lasting decision, will make an impactful decision. Young man, young woman, boy, girl, think. You're a girl today, you're going to be a woman tomorrow. Boy, you're a boy today, you're going to be a father tomorrow. Why not pray for yourself and pray for your death? Pray that God will set you up for greatness. Don't resign. Resign to sin. Resign to failure. Resign to less. I am set up for greatness. I am set up for greatness. My body is a temple of a living God. I cannot lie. I will follow righteousness. I am set up for greatness. Abstain from all appearances of evil. I am set up for greatness. I am set up for greatness. In every area of my life, I will be set up for greatness. God will connect you. Look at David, men, instruments, labor. He began to put things, setting up Solomon for greatness. So will God do for you. So will God do for you. So will God do for you. So will God raise men for you. So will God connect you with destiny helpers. So will God identify you for greatness. Set up for greatness. Set up for greatness. Set up for greatness. 
Set up for greatness. Set up for greatness. Set up for greatness. Set up. God is setting somebody up here for greatness. God is setting up somebody here for greatness. God is setting somebody up here for greatness. But remember, remember, concern for the glory of God. Not just concern for Deeper Life Bible Church as a denomination. Concern for the glory of God in this place. Not just concern for a denominational name and dogma. Concern for the glory of God. God is setting you up for greatness. You are not limited by the resources you have right now. You are unlimited. You are unlimited. You will possess, for the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. They will possess holiness. God sanctify me. Cleanse me. Purge me. Wash me. Within and without. Purge me, O oh God. Set me up for greatness, our Lord, in a great house. But you don't understand that you're in a great house. You don't understand that God's kingdom is great. You don't understand that God is great. The Bible says in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood, also of earth. What kind of vessel are you? Pour yourself. Choose greatness. Choose life. Choose truthfulness. Your coming to church is not a waste of time. God is preparing you for greatness. The time that David had to spend with Solomon, fellowshipping together and receiving instruction was not a waste of time. God was setting up Solomon for greatness. Write your own ticket with God. Rewrite your destiny with God. It's not everybody in America that succeeds. You can be the greatest nation on earth, but God must set you up for greatness. Why should the hidden ask where is your God? Why should the unbelievers ask where is your God? The God that you faithfully serve. Why should the hidden ask where is your God who you say keep covenant? Why should they look at your children and ask where is your God? And brag and say even our own children are better than your own children. Why? Why? As we round up, the choir will lead us in this song. You've done so much for me. I cannot tell it all, Lord. Lord, receive my praise. Choir. You have done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Lord, receive my praise. That's our parting song here today. If I had 10,000 tongues, it still would be enough. Lord, receive. Lord, receive my praise. Sing it like you mean it. You have done so much for me. 
I cannot tell it all. Lord, we sing my prayer. If I had ten thousand tongues, it still wouldn't be enough. Love we sing. Lord, we sing my prayer. What shall I, what shall I bear for he has done so very much for me. What shall I, what shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. your hands to the Lord and say you've done so what much for me. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me.
can somebody shout hallelujah in the house can somebody shout a living hallelujah in the house can somebody shout with a voice of greatness in the house can somebody shout with a resurrected voice in the house can somebody with the spirit of the most high god shout hallelujah can someone who is set up for greatness shout a thunderous hallelujah shout a glorious hallelujah shout a mighty hallelujah we serve a living god shout a mighty hallelujah shout a wonderful hallelujah shout an hallelujah of greatness in the house shout an hallelujah of a victor in the house shout an hallelujah of success in the house shout an hallelujah of divine health in the house shout an hallelujah of breakthrough in the house because your life is shining arise and shine thy glory is come no more obscurity in your life no more ridicule in your life because you are set up for greatness stand tall stand strong be courageous god has settled somebody here amen 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 amen, amen. amen. 